Hey, hi everybody, Dan John here from danjohnuniversity.com. Welcome back. This is our podcast number 126, and that just makes me happy to say that out loud. Uh, reminder, uh, we have our special going on right now. Um, if you type in the word uh, new year, one word, new year, one word, uh, you, you get uh, not only get a great discount on being a member, but you also get something that we're kind of uh, happy about. Goals are big this time of year, and I, I understand it because I'm in the middle of a big one right now. Uh, if you take our goals course right now, it's $15 if you're a member and 30 bucks if you're a non-member. So even if you're not a member, I mean, 30 bucks for the goals course is a pretty good deal. Uh, there's lots of videos. There's lots to talk about. There is one thing I, I, I am going to add to it in the future. So let me just share the biggest idea with you. I took some ideas from Earl Nightingale, Tony Robbins, and of course, my uh, the person, I, one of my real newer heroes, Derek Sivers. And what I'm doing now is, um, it's in the other room because I just finished the, the, the challenge, but uh, the 10,000 swing challenge. But uh, you take a piece of paper and you write a line down the middle and you put two numerical goals. Uh, one of my goals right now is 211 pounds. Let's just focus on that one, okay? So why 211? Well, that's 96 kilos. I just turned 65 as a weightlifter. My birthday's not for months, but as a weightlifter on January 1st, everybody turns the next year. So at 65, uh, I want to weigh 96 kilos because I think, and now this is why I, this number is so important. For my health, I think I'll be healthier at 211. Uh, I think I'll be... Um, my longevity, my statistical chances of living longer will be higher at 211 than 251. Um, for performance, I think I'll lift better as a 96 than I will as a 102. Uh, for Americans, 211 or 224. Uh, for fitness tasks, you know, I think I'll be, it'll be easier for me to carry couches up and down stairs better at 211 than 251. Uh, vanity reasons, I think I'll look better at 211 than 251. And when you put together a goal, one of the things I try to get people to do is make sure that goal touches as many parts of your life as it can. And I, I have a very formalized way of doing that. You know, uh, health, fitness, longevity, performance, you know, okay. Um, vanity, <laughs> look good. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there's other advantages too. Uh, I mean, maybe I'll look better in my my, if, yeah, I spent a lot of money on suits and I don't look that good in them anymore. Then I've lost all this weight, but that's okay. I'll get them, uh, I'll get them brought in. So that is something uh, I talk about, but I don't know if I'm good enough at it. So as I'm speaking to you today on episode 126, I've just finished my first 500 swings in the 10,000 swing challenge. I also just began this morning with Rusty Moore's 14 day fat loss boost which I've talked about on Wandering Weights before, and I talk about on the website a lot. Basically, it's chicken and lots and lots and lots and lots of vegetables, and I just summarized all the food and drinks, anything that doesn't have calories for 14 days, and I'm getting ready for an Olympic lifting meet. So I am I am definitely, I would like to say, you can say to me, Dan, you're chasing a lot of rabbits, but there's only one rabbit. I want to lift in the 211-pound class, the 96-kilo class. That's the single rabbit. But to get to that, get to that rabbit, I'm using three different traps or whatever horrid cliche I can come up with. So, folks, the special is New Year, one word, three months, twenty nine dollars, twenty nine dollars, and then uh, with that, get the goals course uh, for an extra fifteen bucks, and uh, and keep your ears open because I'll be coming back for more on that too. Thanks so much, and let's get started with our questions today. Orlando asks. Orlando says, for easy strength, you specify vertical movements. Why the vertical press and vertical pull? You know, Orlando, I go through this. I have two courses on uh, danjohnuniversity.com about advanced techniques. And I'll just say this right now. The, I, I go through it clearly, but let me, it, it's the answer is so simple. I train almost exclusive. Well, I did. Now it's all different now, but exclusively North American athletes. And all North American male athletes have shoulder issues. So, I mean, it's 90%. Um, they did that one study of cadavers and found 90% of North American cadavers had a shoulder issue. So there's, I mean, I, I just know that my athletes have a shoulder issue. If they don't now, they will soon. <clears throat> I have discovered that the vertical press and the vertical pull 
to be more shoulder friendly than push-ups and bench press. Now you notice I didn't say horizontal row. My knock on the horizontal row family, uh, unless it's done well, is that many of my athletes hurt their lower back doing them because they turn the something as simple as a barbell row into a, a bent over Olympic jump pull thingy and all the stress goes into there. Not, they don't hinge back far enough so it all just ends up in that lower back area, you know, where the Christmas tree area. So that's why. That's all the reason is, is because I'm trying to, uh, very rarely do people show up to me, you know, with no injuries, you know, perfect mobility, perfect flexibility, no injuries, you know, have been eating and, you know, eating protein and vegetables for 10 years, drinking nothing but water and cheapers coach, how can you help me? Usually they just show up. You know, they, <laughs> you can always tell one of my new athletes cause they, they, they get out of the car, they fall on the ground, they limp over, you know? Uh, and then they say, Hey, I got a meet next week. Yeah, okay. So what's so special about both of them being vertical? I wanted to change next month to dips. Oh no, no, absolutely do that. Dips are a wonderful, uh, easy strength exercise. Um, you do have to add load on it. And number two, you have to be good at them. That's kind of a problem for many people. You have to be good at dips. Um, you you got to be, you, you, you got to be able to do them and not have your sternum hurt, which happens to a lot of adolescent boys and it can't bungee up your shoulders. You know, just, you know, if you're fine on those dips are great. Um, just want to understand the program a bit. You've answered this already. Let me know. Yes, I have answered it already, Orlando, but that doesn't matter because one of the things you'll learn if you coach uh, or become an administrator, rep repetition is the mother of implementation. So uh, if you can't repeat yourself, get out of coaching, get out of teaching, get out of being an administrator. Let me say that one more time. Rep repetition is the mother of implementation. Ah, that's enough of that joke. I've beat it to death. But again, repetition is key. Brian has a question. My daughter, 12, is very active. That's an interesting name for a girl, 12. Hmm. Is very active and has been in several sports as well as general kids' activities, riding bikes, swimming, and playing on the trampoline. She has been in gymnastics and competitive dance and band. Well, I like the band. This year, she wants to start volleyball. After some back and forth, we agreed she could do volleyball and drop gymnastics. With this change, we're talking about getting her on a small training routine. I like the word small. I want to teach her how to work towards physical goals in a positive way. For dance, she needs to do to get to splits. And for volleyball, she would have to work on jump height and any prehab to prevent uh, ACL and MCL issues with girls would be good. I would like your advice as it is grounded and consider life balance as part of fitness and well-being. Now, the downside of the gymnastics and competitive dance, of course. Uh, no, no, uh, the gymnastics is fine. Uh, they teach that solid tension stuff. Uh, you might be able to get away at first with just two simple things. Uh, maybe the hip thrust and perhaps the um, clamshell with the glute loop. Uh, go to Brett Contreras' stuff and get a glute loop. Uh, in fact, why don't you get all six? Because uh, Brian, you should use them too. Um, the, the hip thrust on the ground, the clamshell. Um, and the reason I like that is I'm, I'm still a person who thinks it's glute first in jumping. I, I think that. Now, I haven't seen your daughter, and I don't know what position she plays. I do know that there are positions in volleyball that you need to be kind of, I hate to use this phrase, I hate this phrase, quad dominant, because maybe you have to stand up close and your jumping is much more, you know, kind of a, a boing boing versus a, a triple jumper, you know, a, a Mario, I don't know, whatever, the Mario brother jump, you know, uh, if you've ever seen a triple jumper, they go boom, 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 that kind of jump. Uh, your strike, the, the the ones coming in from the outside and they, they hit the ball down and, you know, they come from the outside. That kind of jumping is different than the block jumping. I mean, not, I mean, it's still, both are human jumps, but there is a slight difference. But either way, getting her, glutes as strong as you physically can uh it because and also too the other thing is it just it's such a simple thing to do from there if you can move into i i, I think the goblet squat would be a good movement and not because <clears throat> i invented it 
but I think it would be good for the just the general mobility and teaching the na- the knees not to come in. Here's an idea. You can also keep the glute loops on when you have or use a very light dumbbell and do goblet squats to teach her to drive those knees out so she never has that, that knee collapse inward. Um, though, I mean, to be honest, injury injuries happen and we can't do much to prevent them. Boy, you know, hip thrust, clam shell, goblet squat for a 12-year-old, pretty simple stuff, low end, uh, let her, I mean, honestly, um, what I've seen here, playing on the trampoline, riding her bike and swimming, uh, I mean, those are just as good for, I mean, the swimming for the volleyball, it's miles better than 90% of the junk, I'm going to tell you, and doing the trampoline for jumping, I don't even know, I mean, I don't know what you can do better, so uh, by adding those three as kind of a, you know, long-term uh, getting ready for advanced lifting is good. Uh, three exercises, a couple days a week. She might fall in love with the glute loop and steal it from you, as happened in my house. It seems like no matter how many glute loops I buy, uh, they get stolen within hours by certain blonde-haired, blue-eyed members of my family, who I call my daughters. Um, I like it. I like that's pretty simple. It's pretty reasonable. Uh, and I can support it even <sighs> maybe downstream a little bit, maybe suitcase carries the one harm farmer walks just for that, uh, just for that stability, but don't, don't go too crazy yet. Uh, that play is going to do more for her legs than all the nonsense I can ever do. Thank you. And Brian and good luck. And I expect you to keep me informed. Okay. Hey, we got a question from Shalva. Shalva says, my brother started training two months ago. So while well, he must be an expert, already have his own website. He's 18 and a novice. We did some high rep compound movements about two months. Yeah, I, I like that idea. After this, we are considering starting strength program. Um, yeah, I don't know why you would. That's somebody else's program. Um, uh, I personally recommend uh, Marty Gallagher's work. Um uh, for beginners, uh, the focus on absolutely perfect technique. Uh, Jim Wendler's five, three, one for beginners is fabulous. Um, is it a good idea to run that program or just use some basic linear pre- rep sets, decrease weight increases? Shalva, anything you do, anything you do with a, a, a new person is going to be great. Um, the thing I would do is just, I would give you the advice I was given when I first started, uh, you got to do the basic power lifts. You got to do the basic Olympic lifts and you should do farmer bars, farmer walks. So, you know, bench, squat, deadlift, learn how to clean and press. I would suggest the snatch and clean and jerk because they're amazing. Uh, if you don't want to get too technical, if you just learned uh, the squat, the deadlift, the bench press, the front squat, uh, a power clean variation and a military press, and the farmer walk, sled pull family, that'd be great too. Yeah, I, I think there's, I think anything you do is better. Um, I don't have my journal right next to me. I don't have my first journal. Oh, here's what, no, I do have this one. No, that's not a journal. I have, this is my 1991 journal. And I'm telling myself in this one, um, power is key. Focus on press, squat. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, deadlift, chin, dip, and curl. That's interesting. Three days a week. Wow, that's that's interesting. That's oh, that's my eighty nine. That's my key lessons of eighty nine. And this this is the year I got back to Olympic lifting. So that's interesting to see that. Um, but really, keep yeah, keep it simple, stupid, kiss program. Uh, don't get too complicated. Uh, I think linear periodization works for a beginner and. The problem is it uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a siren, you know. It's a seductive mistress that makes you believe that this is going to be the way it's going to be the rest of your life. Uh, look into Jim Wendler's five three one because he does the overhead press also, which I think is important. Or Marty Gallagher's work, purposeful primitive. He's got those programs. Uh, if you're a member of Dan John University, Marty uh, allowed us to use his basic template, so you can find his most important work in there. So, um, sign up, just do what Marty says, <laughs> do what Marty says, WWMS. All right. I hope that helped. Bye-bye. 
We have a question from Peter. Peter says this, do you think the RKC certification is worth doing for someone who doesn't have any intention of being a personal trainer? You know, Peter, that's okay. At first it was like, I hate it when people ask me if a cert that I do is worth it. And it, cause it kind of hurts your feelings. It's like, you know, Hey Dan, you teach history. Yeah. Yeah, I do. Is there any value in history? Huh. You know, it kind of breaks your you know, a little heart. Um, the best candidates, this thing I got to be careful about. But yeah, a lot of the best candidates I've ever had in the RKC are people who are just there to learn. Uh, and, it's, and it's interesting because very often those are the people who end up making intentional communities, uh, buying some bells, having their friends come over every Saturday, uh, taking their bells up to a park and training with friends. So yeah, I think so. I think so. Now you have to be careful because I get paid to do this. So you know, when you get paid, I'm now, now I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a barker at a carnival. Hey, step right up, little boy. Come here, Peter. You know, try it. Like I don't know why I did that. I saw that you are doing an RKC in Roseville, California in May. I am. And it seems like it'd be a great experience. I am hesitant because it's pretty expensive. For the same price, I get about 10 sessions with a good trainer at home or a round trip to Buenos Aires. <laughs> okay. What are your thoughts on who should do the RKC and the factors you would consider when making that decision? Well, I can't, I, I can't give you too much because uh, I don't want to, you know, I, I, I know this, uh, Peter, that the students that I taught at uh, Juan Diego who actually listen and uh, many of them have gone on become trainers and stuff. And they have said that even though I taught them all kinds of great stuff, more than my graduating 17 and 18 year olds knew more about training than the bulk of the people who, who have the sign in their door, personal trainer or strength coach. They, they, they learned a lot, but those who went on to do certs came back and said an interesting thing. I couldn't, they couldn't hear me. They needed to hear somebody else say it. So the, the one thing that helps Peter is that you're going to get other voices and maybe one of them is going to say something that makes you go, Oh, I get it now. And whenever I have someone say, Oh, I get it now. I always take out and I write that in my notes too. And I save that whatever the person said, I save that for future reference. So the biggest thing you're going to miss Peter is the communal nature of learning the hinge, the squat with other people. One person's confusion might illuminate you. So, and that by itself is the reason you do it. Uh, when I used to teach you that discus camp, uh, the John Powell discus camp, and here's our coffee mugs from our 25th anniversary. Um, one of the things the athletes would tell me is that for the first time in their life, when they said, let's go throw 20, 30, 40 people said, I'll go with you. People who are exhausted would say, Ugh, I can't throw, but I'm going to go down and hang out and watch. And, that kind of communal interaction with someone who has the passion that you do is just illuminating. Now, at the same time, I don't believe in this idea called a room full of mirrors. Like I would never want to be in a gym with nothing but 22 year old, um, you know, people who are getting in shape to go to Cancun for spring break. I, that would be the fact that would be a nightmare for me actually. I never, it's, we call that a room full of mirrors. You know, everyone looks the exact same. But what's nice about the RKC is, you know, I've taught people in their 70s at the RKC. And of course, my daughter at one time, Kelly, was the youngest person to ever get the RKC. She had just turned 18. I mean, she had just turned 18. So, you know, you might have someone, like we had uh, the head of one of the SEAL teams partner with one of my interns. They, they partnered the whole weekend and the problem with that is, you know, uh, I love I love my intern, and I and I and I have, but this guy also was an offensive lineman for the Naval Academy, and uh, by the end of the weekend, uh, Parker said he was just so exhausted because this guy's engine was so massive. But here's the thing, for the rest of Parker's you know career, he's going to have an insight about how some engines are bigger than others. So just something that simple, or if you're trying to stretch somebody out who's got 
you know, uh, a traffic accident in their leg or you're trying to work with somebody who's got this or that, it'll be illuminating for you long term. I, I don't want to convince you, Peter, but if I see you there, uh, it'll be nice. Thank you. Okay, we got a question from Chris. Chris says, I'll be 68 in a month. Good overall health. I've been lifting for years and I've settled into three times a week, exclusively compound lifts. My goal is to just maintain strength as I age. I, I like that. Just out of curiosity, I'd like to incorporate hang cleans into my routine. I don't feel as explosive as I did when I was younger. And Chris, just real fast, the first article I ever read from Clarence Bass, C, the letter C, Bass.com, Keep Spring in Your Step, a conversation he had with the late Terry Todd, who was a friend of mine. And it talks about them doing Olympic lifts to keep spring in their step. Which, So you're saying the same thing. Yeah. I've had surgeries on both shoulders in the past. Do you think there's any risk in adding them to my program at my age and with my shoulder history? Yeah, I mean, there's a risk. Yeah, there's always a risk. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can't do something. Um, Marty Gallagher has an article over RAW, R-A-W, on progressive pulls. Progressive pulls. And, of course, Marty, uh, you know, Marty has a nice little program where the barbell's on the floor the whole time. The first exercise is overhead squats, fall, and the weight just keeps going up. Overhead squats, power snatch, power clean, clean pull. I, I, I'm going to forget from now on. Uh, deadlift, uh, a shrug. There might be some variations you should look at. Uh, and I, I agree with what you're saying about uh, uh, the snap and the, and the spring um, and the explosiveness. There has to be a shoulder, a shoulder friendly explosive move that you can do. Uh, as I'm sitting here, I just did 500 kettlebell swings. You know, <laughs> can you do swings? Can you do kettlebell snatches? Can you, uh, can you do snatch grip high pulls? Can you do clean grip high pulls? Can you do clean grip snatches? Uh, it might be worth your time to get a PVC pipe and uh, just practice some different moves and to see which ones make anything bark if it makes if it barks with pvc pipe or a broomstick it's gonna bark with you know a heavy load i i like the idea you know i you know i'm about to head up in a, in a couple minutes and snatch and clean and jerk you know for the better part of an hour and uh i don't know i think it helps but at the same time we, you got to be just a little more wary so uh Think about, you know, maybe take make a list of all the exercises that you think you know can do. Try them out with a PVC pipe, uh, a broomstick. Get a sense for how things are. Maybe you can take, and if you have the, 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 the courage to do this, take two or three weeks to just do the empty bar. Um, just do the empty bar and just see if, you know, if that helps. And just get a sense of what works and what hurts and doesn't. Uh, I think you can make, you can take care of a lot of business with 65 and 80, 65 pound snatches and 85 pound cleans. I mean, I, I do. Uh, very often people come watch me snatch and clean and jerk and they'll be like, I thought you were really strong. Well, I am, but in training, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to get to the meat so I can impress everybody at the meet. I'm not going to try to impress my, my friends in the gym. I was about to call them my loser friends, but I like them too much. Uh, Chris, I hope that helped. Okay, uh, it's a it's a tough question, and I agree entirely with what you want, um, but it's going to be up to you to figure out the the path a little bit. Okay, we have a question from Jesse, and Jesse says, "I'm currently in week three of Easy Strength using the DJU.com, DanJohnUniversity.com. Excellent, uh, Jesse, and don't forget if you use New Year, one word, you get that big discount. And loving it." Curious about a couple of things. One, the site pres is prescribing kettlebell swings instead of loaded carries. Okay, go in and read. Okay, so we've got the videos on Easy Strength, and then we got the two courses there, Jesse, uh, the basics of Easy Strength and advanced techniques of Easy Strength. You're going to follow up on that. What you're going to see is that I give you both options on the site. There's the kettlebell swing or the loaded carry. So almost every program has a vertical push, vertical pull, a, a hinge deadlift, an ab wheel. Okay, that's almost universal. 
and then either swings or loaded carries. It depends. And here's the thing, what my thought was, swings, you know, swings for four weeks, loaded carries for four weeks, swings for four weeks, loaded carries for four weeks, like that. Uh, is it perfect? Well, you know, you know what do I know? Um, but I was wondering why it would default to that given how much I value loaded carries. I, I think I explained that okay. And here's the other thing, just do loaded carries like I do. I mean, I throw suitcase carries into. I mean, I'll do a couple sets of Olympic lifts and then just do a, a suitcase carry just to kind of, you know, kind of reset uh, in Tim Anderson's terms. I also love loaded carries, so have started incorporating a, a carry se sequence drill as part of my warm up. I take a relatively light kettlebell, 16 or 20, that's not that's that's great, and do waiter rack suitcase with my right hand, then with my left. Repeat that one more time. That seem okay to you? Look up the word cook drill c-o-o-k drill and um, you will see me doing the exact same thing my friend i think it's a marvelous warm-up in fact uh, uh you know great cook recommends up to 15 minutes of it which i think is fab fabulous uh number two was looking uh for some of the classic strength books you mentioned and stumbled upon bill hinbird's world famous super strength training site bill just uh did a special on me a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I'm a big fan of his site. Um, I don't know if I have any of his... Yeah, right over there, I have the, the Wrestling Conditioning Encyclopedia. Um, uh, got Hack. Hack is buried in here somewhere. Hackam Schmidt's book, The Will to Live. Uh, John Jesse's other books are uh, around here somewhere. Uh, this isn't a library. This is a resource room. In other words, I don't put things away. Uh, it has a great inventory. Thought you and or the gentle listeners might find it useful. Oh, absolutely. You know, I hope you guys know how much shout out I give. You know, I shout out Tim Anderson all the time. I shout out Pat Flynn. I shout out Bill Hinburn more than you would think. Uh, when I'm doing workshops around the world, uh, I, I I sell Bill, Bill's books constantly. Uh, I shout out Sarah Anderson. I shout out Ann Reese. Uh, gosh, there's just so many people. I, I And I know him. Josh Hillis. I mean, I drop his name all the time for fat loss. Um, the thing I like about Bill is I think it does help sometimes to go to the source. Uh, upset, upstairs, I have some of those bent press books. And when I'm doing those uh, uh, RKC2s, I like to go back to the original the original sources on bent press and see what they're doing. Um, because sometimes, I, I mean, when I met these RKC2s in the past, you know, and they're explaining the bent press for four and five hours. And it's like, I got no idea what to teach. Um, it's nice to go back to those original people who simplified things quite a bit. Um, I think the key to understanding things is making it simple. And one of the things about Bill's uh, site is there's, there's the pioneers. Uh, if you get DeLorme's book, a book, Progressive Resistance Exercise, many of the you listeners will find it boring, but DeLorme is putting together what we would consider weightlifting. And then, of course, if you read Reg Park's book, you'd be like, there's nothing new under the sun. So, holy cow. Hey, gentle listener, that's all the questions for this week. Episode 126 was very short. Uh, reminder, if you have questions, uh, you can always ask me at podcast at danjohnuniversity.com. Uh, I will be sitting here breathlessly awaiting your questions. And until next time, let's all keep on lifting and learning, okay? Thank you.